Welcome to the Pistons Fanatic. I am your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Piston fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been the varsity basketball coach of a very successful program in northern Michigan. Well, we lost our 16th in a row, 118-112 to in New York, and... I'm beside myself. I, first, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you about something I've heard. I've had been sitting on this a while. I have a reliable source, a well-respected source from inside the Piston organization that says we have major, major cultural problems on our team and in our organization. And, you know, you can kind of tell it by watching how things are going, I, you know, but I, I've seen it and I, you know, I just haven't said anything about it. And I hate anonymous sources, but this person, I heard it directly from this person. And he has very great inside knowledge, and he's not a person that's just this guy that's got an axe to grind or whatever. He is a well-respected person with lots of integrity. So you can take that for what you want, and I can't go in any further than that. But we lost our 16th game in a row, and I know that George Blaha says that Monty was a genius changing up the lineup tonight. But I'm going to tell you, we were in this game tonight because Cade's – and um, Sasser were a combined 9 for 16 on threes. Otherwise, we're not in this game. And Killian shot the lights out. And we're going to talk more about that later. I mean, when a guy goes, shoots 10 for 13 on a night where he shoots 1 for 4 on free throws, what kind of shooter is that guy? But we're going to d- dive into that. The great news is Bogey's coming back. Um, but the worst news is we have, I've talked about it, Before the season, during the season, in multiple episodes, the priority this year is the core four, the the development of Ivy and Cade and um, Duran and Asar. That's the priority. And, you know, you can say we need to win one game, so we make these changes, and so if it works, we just got to win a game. I agree we just got to win a game, but you – you don't play Jaden Ivy 12 minutes unless you have an X to grind with that guy. You can't tell me that he you, – you, you worked with him all year. Is he all of a sudden doing something wrong? Did he do something? He played a lot of minutes the other game, and all of a sudden now you're only going to play him 12 minutes? He was like the 11th guy put in the game today. And what are you trying to do? Send him a message, Monty? I watched Killian get blown by a whole bunch of times. You know, um, Brunson, 42 points. You know who is the primary – Garter on Brunson, it was Killian Hayes. And so I, you know, anyway, I just, we're going to talk more about that things, but I can't, I, you know, Asar plays how many minutes? 13 minutes. 13 minutes for Asar Thompson. And those two guys are the guys who we're trying to develop, and they played great this year. Ivy shot great this year. Asar has done so many fantastic things together. He still had seven rebounds tonight, but, you know, if we lose with those guys playing well, and they make mistakes, and they're not perfect, but we're going to play – is I'm going to tell you, Killian Hayes and Isaiah Stewart and Isaiah Livers would not start on any team in the NBA, let alone probably be in their rotation. And so, you know, it just makes no sense. But Monty, you know, the same. It's got to be the same little DeAndre Ayton thing that he's got this thing. But, again, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm beside myself. Down the stretch. We have those guys in, Stu and Livers. Guess what happens? They double Cade. They double him and pressure him. They leave Livers and Stu wide open, wide open. Livers shoots the air ball. Stu's clanks one. Nobody's within 10 feet of him, and he misses it. They, they miss like five threes in the fourth quarter. And so it just – and that, those are our spacers. we got to get, you know, Livers in the game because he's a spacer. And, he, you know, so I'm, I am fired up. So Killian, in, in the last – 10 years, nobody in NBA, nobody in the NBA, in the entire NBA that has started half of his team's games has a lower effective shooting percentage than our Killian Hayes. Nobody. 10 years. He's the worst shooter in 10 years. And we start him. And he he's on fire tonight. So you're going to say, well, he's on fire tonight. But the same guy that was 10 for 13 tonight, he was 1 for 4 on free throws. And here's the thing. I've said this before. Killian, in his career, he is averaged well this year this year he's averaged eight and a half points started most of the first half of the season 38 percent from the field 28 percent on threes and 76 percent from the free throw line for his career he averaged 8.4 so one tenth of a point less for his career than he did this year 37 percent 
So he's 1% higher this year than he is this year on, on field goal percentage and 27% on three-point percentage. So he, he, he's consistent. He's consistently bad. He's consistently the worst shooter. And, I mean, Monty gets up there and says, well, Killian got us organized. He got us organized, you know, and he, he, he did shoot great. Maybe he's going to shoot 90% or 80% or whatever it is the rest of the year. But when you're one for four on free throws, what does that tell you about what kind of shooter you are? And he's not, he's, he's a 75% or 76% free throw shooter. That's what he is. And he's a 38% shooter from, this is his fourth year. Four years he shot, consistent as can be, 38, 28, or 37, 27 for his career. And 70 some percent from the free throw line. So that's who Killian Hayes is. So, you know, and then we have, um, we can't, we can't play Ivy and he's, quick and fast and he's shooting 50% from the floor and like 36% on threes at least. And, you know, I don't know. I don't get, I can't imagine what it would be like to be in his shoes. His head's got to be about exploding Ivy's head. You know, he, he, I can't imagine just going through warmups, going to practice every day and seeing that coach and feeling the way that he has to feel and feeling like what, what he's got to be like in the twilight zone. You know, I, I mean, it's, this season's a nightmare for the whole team. It's a nightmare for me, and I love this team. But tonight, you know, like I said, we what are we doing? Or, or we're not. We got those four guys. They need to develop, and we're not going to play them. We're going to bench them out of everybody. You know, we're not going to bench Stu for Livers if Livers needs to space the floor. Tonight, I watched um, Randall. Randall didn't even look at um, Stu. Stu had the ball right at the three-point line. He didn't even look at the basket. And, and Randall's 10 feet off him, not even looking at him, looking at who he's going to guard next. And Stu doesn't shoot it. And, you know, he, he's in there. And so we'll go through their stats. Livers plays 27 minutes. He's two for eight from the floor, one for five on free throw, on, from the three-point line, one for three on free throws. And he's a better shooter than Stu. He is. But he shot the crap, crappy tonight. He got four rebounds, one assist, six points. And two turnovers, and that that was the big thing that made the difference. And he got blown by and those guys. So Stu and Livers were the guys that guarded Julius Randall. They were the two guys that guarded him. He blew Randall blew right by them, left-handed. He's left-handed. We know that he's left-handed. He scored 29 points, and those were the two primary guys that guarded Julius Randall. And he lit them up. And so they're in there for defense. They're in there for shooting. Stu's 32 minutes. He played 32 minutes. Two for six. One for four on threes. Zero free throws, seven rebounds in 32 minutes, zero assists, two turnovers, five points, 32 minutes. So, but that's the difference. You know, he, it just, there's guys that Monty, people love Mont, uh, Stu and Livers, a lot of you do. And I, you know, you're not going to like me after this podcast. And I, I'm sorry for that, that. I get so fired up about this one. But Cade, 37 minutes, 12 for 20, which awesome. Four for nine, awesome. Three for four on free throws. I don't. That's the first free throw I've seen him miss in forever. He's an amazing free throw shooter, but he had he had seven turnovers, and that is awful. And there's no reason he had 31 points. He had eight assists and two steals. So that's still a real good game, but he cannot possibly make you know seven turnovers. That's just bad. But I still he's got to play. He he's just got to play. And so why do I say one's got to play? You know. Killian's had, he's, he's got to start way more games than anybody ever in his life should have. And same with Stu. And most people in the Piston Nation recognize that he is nothing but a good backup. And yet we paid him a bunch of money and we start him every game. And I don't know, I just don't get it. Duran, 33 minutes, 5 for 7, which 12 rebounds. So that's, that's a great game. That's what he does. And he, two assists and two turnovers, which he still – those guys, Stu and Livers and um, Dern should not, never have two turnovers. I mean, maybe one one out of every three or four games could they have two turnovers because they don't even touch it that much. And half the time they touch it, they shoot it at least. And so – anyway, so he had ten points, and he got some bad calls. He got three fouls, and most of them were on setting illegal picks. And we did get a bunch of crap fouls again. But Killian, 28 minutes. 10 for 13. He was crazy. It was it was incredible to watch him. He hasn't made a three in so long, or he's he's shooting such a bad percentage on threes, but he was two for three on threes. He shot a, a, like a jumper from the free throw line. He jumped up in the air. He went to look to pass it, and the guy wasn't open. So he's almost just before he touches the floor, he jerks it up to the basket and makes it, which incredible shot, and it, that took talent. But, but how, you know, 
he's one for four on free throws. And guys can be one for four on three throws. But what tells you, everybody will tell you, and one of the reasons I hold out more hope for Cade being a good shooter is because he is at like a 90% free throw shooter. And he has been, had, you know, other than one game, like a three game stretch, he had shot the three bad, but the rest of the year he shot over 40%. So um, he had four, Killian had four assists and 23 points, which is, I don't know if that's not quite as career high, I know, against one time he played against Oklahoma City or somebody when they were tanking and they had a bunch of G-leaders in there and he scored 26 and shot real bad, but he had 26. But, you know, and I feel bad because it, it sounds like I hate him. I don't hate him. He he He's not the one that's putting himself in the game. He's not the one that's been playing him all these four years and when he's been the worst shooter in the NBA over the last 10 years. It's the coaches, and maybe it's part way because – Troy drafted him with the seventh pick. And again, that's why people say that we paid Stu that contract because otherwise that that whole draft class with three first round draft picks was going to go be for nothing. That, that that was said countless times I heard that. Well, my, Troy had to give him the money because otherwise, because we traded away Sadiq and we, and at that time, everybody was sure that Killian was a bust. I mean, we traded for Monty Morris and we drafted Sasser and we had Cade and Ivy, and so what did that say was going to be about um, Killian? But obviously, for whatever reason, and I'm not at practice again, I guess I wish I was, but why he dislikes Ivy so much and why he loves Killian so much, it just, you know, just is a mystery to me. But Bagley, Bagley 14 minutes tonight, three for six, just like he does. Two for two on free throws, so he scored eight points in 14 minutes and three rebounds, and so that's a solid game. He could have, should have made another shot, but Asar Thompson, this this kid needs to play. This this kid needs to play, and no matter what, I mean, again, I don't want to lose. I'm sick of losing, I'm sick, but I'm sick of playing bad, but Asar does so many things, and he can't shoot a lick. And the irony is we lose this game, and he only plays 13 minutes, he makes one shot and it's a three. And he's he's a, so we again we should have won this game because when you got two guys like Cade and you got a guy coming off your bench in Sasser that's five for seven on threes, teams win those games. And then we got Asar who can't, hasn't made a three in like a month. Is one for one on threes. So he's one for two for the game. But he he's two for two on free throws. Two. Um, well, I'm looking at the wrong person. He one for one on threes, seven rebounds. And three turnovers, which are incredible in only 13 minutes. So he, the rebounding was phenomenal, but the turnovers were terrible. So he had three points. So we played Kevin Knox tonight is welcome back to New York. We haven't been playing him, but he played nine minutes, one for three, 0 for two on threes, and he's supposed to be a floor spacer, and he had three points. Um, Ivy, 12 minutes. 12 minutes. I'm going to tell you. Killian would not start on one team and wouldn't even be in the rotation in the NBA probably. And and Ivy, all every team is going to want him. Not every team, but most teams, unless if they're loaded with guards, they're not going to want him. But there's going to be teams lining up wanting to trade. They're going to want to trade for him and get him cheap because they know, you know, something's wrong there. And the, the, still the thing that's hanging over our head is, you know, would they ever have the guts to, you know, does Monty want to get fired? This, is that why he does this lineup? So that he and so he can just go home for six years and get paid eighty million dollars? I don't know. I, I, I don't know when you don't start a guy that's supposed to be your future. And you know if we're gonna and we still lost even though we had some like I said the Sasser performance was out of this world. But still heartbreaking for me that Burks he only played eleven minutes and it, it's a mystery. Zero for three on threes and he, he made one point he got to shoot the technical and he made it so that was sad people in New York loved him they loved him when he played there and thought that he was really good but Sasser 19 minutes only so again we're trying to win the game obviously Monty's trying to win the game and he plays killing or he plays Ivy in the fourth quarter he doesn't play he he's the 11th person into the game in the second he starts the second quarter 10 guys had entered the game before he got in the game and then all of a sudden he plays him in the fourth quarter for a few minutes. And Sasser's on the bench. And then in the fourth quarter, we, we couldn't score the last – we got th uh, three baskets in the last whole bunch – five minutes, three field goals in the last five minutes of the game, which has been a problem for us. And hopefully 
Bogey can come back and, and help with that, I think he will make a big difference with that. So, um, again, we, we shot good. We shot overall 53%, but we had 20 turnovers. And so the lineup change, you know, the lineup change, does that make any less turnovers? No, that didn't make any less turnovers. We had 20 tonight. And so... I, I think there is a real th re thing for lineup changes. I want a lineup change. And it's just he changes, you know, he puts livers in there for Asar, and he puts Killian in for um, Ivy. And he says, we, he says, said after the last game, we got to create space. We got to create space for C Cade and Ivy. They don't have enough space. And then he doesn't play Ivy. Why, you, why would you say you, we got to create space for him? And then for Cade, you're, you're still, you're playing Stewart and Livers and Killian, and you got to create space. So anyway, I apologize. I apologize for being so fired up, and I think that, um, like I said, it, it's, uh, it does bother me. There again, that person uh, inside, a person really close to the organization and well, well respected, a man of integrity, told me directly that there he doesn't want his name put out there. So that's not good, but I, I, I guess I don't blame him, I guess, if you knew the situation. But um, So now we get to go play Cleveland Saturday, and that'll be interesting because Bogey's going to be back. 90% chance all the reports are Bogey's going to be back, and he will make a huge difference. But the mystery is who's going to start, you know, who's going to start. And, you know, my lineup, I'm going to tell you, is still the same as Cade, Ivy, Asar, Bogey, and Duran. And that's my lineup. And, you know, again, like I said, we're, we're not going to win any championships this year, but we have to develop those four guys that are our four most talented players. And, you know, Bogey is Bogey's one of our most talented players. He's more talented than some of those guys, especially when it comes to shooting the ball. But he is 34 years old. He has this year and next year left on his contract, and then he's going to be 36. And so that's not our future. So anyway, I forgot to mention to please subscribe. And if, you're, if you know a friend that likes the Pistons, if they like, if they like Killian and Stu, don't, don't tell them to watch this one. But anyway... Thank you for listening. Thank you to all my listeners. Thank you for all your comments. Be the reason that somebody feels cared about and loved. And let's go Pistons beat Cleveland.